you want to install your own winch? Well, you picked the right video, didn't you? I'm going to fit a winch in the Patrol today. Not the first time I've installed a winch, but it will be the first time I've owned a vehicle with a winch in it. Let's have a look what I'm installing. Here's what I've chosen. Ridge Riders 12,000 pound electric winch with synthetic rope. Why did I choose it? Uh, well, I've heard some pretty good stories about them over the years. And I went on a trip with um, Ronnie and Torben from Four Wheeling Australia years ago, like 2015. And Ronnie got stuck on a very steep, slippery uh, clay hill climb. Torben had an older version of one of these in his 79 series. And we hauled Ronnie all the way back up the hill backwards. Took a good couple of hours and we filmed it too. So just have a look at the little info icon up there if you want to go back and see the double line winch recovery video that we did. Anyway, so I was pretty impressed with it. And I said to Super Cheap, do you want to supply one for the video? They said, yeah, all right. Happy days for both of us. So what made me choose synthetic over wire? Well, there's two reasons really. Uh, the first one is weight. I'm trying to save a little bit of weight and the whole winch with wire combo probably weighs twice what this does. The wire is a very heavy component. Uh, secondly is safety because there's a few uh, videos getting around on YouTube, on the internet um, of cables letting go. And when a cable lets go, they store a lot of kinetic energy and you know, cut people in half. When a rope lets go, this synthetic rope doesn't store nearly as much energy, a little bit. So it snaps under the full weight of a four wheel drive and it pretty much just drops to the ground. The downsides of choosing rope, uh, it tends to need replacing more frequently. A steel cable will last a very, very long time depending how much you use it. Um, rope doesn't like being in the sun. You have to take a lot more care of it. You have to wash it out and really get any grit out of the fibers. And then when it does come time to replace it, it is pricier than cable. Though, having said that, the price has become a lot more reasonable over the years. So anyway, that's my reason for choosing it. Let's go over to the car and have a look how to install it. First thing you want to do is make sure you've got a winch compatible ball bar. But guess what? I don't. What I'm going to be doing is using this. It's a winch cradle. And the reason I'm using this is so I can keep the alloy bar because I'm on a bit of a mission to save weight on this patrol, as I've mentioned in previous videos of mine. So if you're looking to save weight or save a bit of money not having to spend a couple of thousand dollars on a winch bar, getting a winch cradle might not be a bad idea. Whether you're using an alloy bar with a winch cradle or a steel winch bar, I want you to get underneath and check the bolts that hold that cradle or bull bar to the chassis. You need to make sure they're high tensile. Now, if you've got a proper winch bar on there, and it's been fitted by a trusted fitter, they should all be high tensile. But if you're not too sure about the history of the thing, it's best to check. The way you check is you look at the head of the bolt. So this one's got a little 8.8 .8 marked on there. 8.8 .8 or above is high tensile. If there's anything else marked on the top without those numbers or there's just nothing at all, ditch the bolts and replace it with high tensile. This next part all depends on the way your vehicle and bull bar is set up. Some vehicles you'll be able to get straight under here and your winch will just fit up in that gap and bolt to the bar. Other vehicles, like mine, the bull bar is going to have to come off. Some of them, the uh, winch won't fit through that gap. Uh, in this case, I have to pull the bull bar off, mount my winch cradle, put the winch on top and then put the bar back over it. So all depends on your situation. Let's get this thing off. Six bolts and the bull bar is off. Now it's time to have a look at the winch cradle. As you can see, because it's a generic model, it's too wide. It needs to sit, needs to be cut off here and cut off here. So I'm gonna to have to break out the Backyard Mechanics multi-tool. So I've cut it to size. If I was you, I'd probably just um, buy one specific for your vehicle, it's a bit easier. I actually thought this one was for a patrol, uh, but it turns out it's universal. Oh well, that's life. Where I've cut the ends there, I'm just gonna give that a lick of black paint. There, yeah, black paint. Stop it rusting. Now the problem I'm gonna have is uh, this non-winch bar has no cutouts across the top, so 
your clutch gearbox lever here is going to sit like right there. You can't get your hands in there. I'm going to have to rotate the gearbox. Now luckily for you, this is something that you'll probably have to do. The only exception being um, vehicles where the winch sits horizontal like that with cutouts in the bull bar to be able to get at the controls. If yours mounts onto the front of the bull bar like that, then you're going to have to rotate that gearbox 90 degrees. So as you can reach from the top. In my case, it's mounting like that. I want to be able to reach that lever from the front. So I'm going 90 degrees to get the lever to the front. Now on some winches, you have a series of bolts or Allen hex head bolts around the edge of your gearbox. On the Ridge Rider winch and the case with some other winches as well, they're actually kind of inside here. What I've got to do to change that around is remove these tie rods here and there's that little black one under there that's just one to hold it sort of together during transit. So we take off and toss the little black one, remove these then that gearbox will come away. So I've taken all the screws out of that gearbox and as you can see that's how it used to sit. Now all you can do is rotate until the gear lever is where you want it to be. Then you just have to look in the top here and rotate it a little bit more until it lines up with the nearest set of holes. So I can have it either facing a little bit down or facing a little bit up. Hmm, options. Now you just take your little hex head bolts, put them back in, bolt that all back up and put your winch back together. Pretty easy, took about 20 minutes. All right, in every winch that I ever saw, the rope needs to come out off the bottom of the drum. So when your winch is winding in, it should be winding in from the bottom of the drum, not the top. And it says that in the instructions. Again, read your instructions for your winch, make sure it's not different in your case. Any winch should come with a set of mounting bolts. This one does too. And they generally have a little square nut. Now these go just down in here. So you can see your mounting hole there. And the little square nuts just locate into a square slot there. It makes it nice and easy. And then you just put your bolts in through the bottom. If you're mounting it onto the front of a bar, so up this way, your fair lead actually becomes a part of it. So it's a little bit trickier. You've got to juggle things a little bit more and you might want a friend to help you lift the winch. On the front of your bull bar where you've got the four holes, you bolt two in and then if you have a look at your uh, fair lead, the two holes in the front of that line up perfectly there. They tend to give you a set of these uh, hex head bolts that goes through your fair lead and secures your winch to the bull bar. Again, in this case, because my winch bolts down like that, there'll be separate bolts to hold my fair lead on the front. Let's do it. time to talk about the uh, wiring on the top. So here I've got the control box. Pretty damn simple really. They put a yellow jacket on this one, a black on this one and a red on this one. Corresponds to, excuse me Rog, uh, red here, yellow here, and black here. That's three of them dealt with. The big red one here, the long red one goes up to your main battery. Generally right on the bottom of the motor there's another bolt terminal, just like these ones. On that one goes that little black wire and this black wire. Big long black earth from that bolt there up to the negative on your main battery. Now with a winch, always earth straight back to the battery. You never earth it back to the chassis because you end up with resistance problems. You want maximum current at all times. Also, we're gonna consider mounting of the control box. I'm just gonna put this where most people do, which is right up front and center on top of the bull bar. In my case, there's no holes in the bull bar for it to go down. So 
I am going to run it straight through this gap in the grill here, down onto the motor, which means I can do it all now. I can just feed the wiring through there and while I have to put the bull bar on and everything, I'll just cable tie the control box up out of the way. Also, it's optional, but I've always done it every time I've fitted a winch. You can slip some corrugated protective tubing over each wire. So I'll be doing that for sure. It's been a long day, but I'm getting somewhere. I never was the quickest worker. Here's what we've got. Look at that. I had to cut that opening out. And around here, I'm just gonna line it with this stuff called pinch weld. Now, if you don't know what pinch weld is, it's like this, it's almost like a seal. It's just shaped like that, but it's rubber. It's not designed to actually seal and it kind of just clamps around blunt edges like this. So it'll create like a nice black rubber lining, make it look a bit neater and stop me cutting my wrists up when I reach in for the gearbox. Talking about the gearbox, that's quite well located up in there. Anyway, now I've just got to mount the control box right in the middle of the bull bar like everyone else's. I could have taken it up here, I think, and maybe mounted it here or just in here. But to do that, I would have had to extend the control cables and uh, I don't have the hardware to do it. So in the middle of the bull bar will do me fine for now. The control box is mounted. Have a look at this. It's pretty good, eh? Nice and sturdy. One more thing to do before we can give it a squirt and see if it works. Got to connect up. Positive, negative. Moment of truth. Does it work? I'll tell you what, if it doesn't, I'm probably going to have the biggest man tantrum. Oh, we've got a light. It says wired. Ah, that's the sound I wanted to hear. Yep, I press in and it goes in. I press out and it goes out. So I've got the rope and the drum up the right way. So I got my pinch weld, uh, Clark rubber in Cannington. That looks a bit neater, doesn't it? So she's all good and ready to go. Now I'm gonna show you how we spool this rope on nice and tight. So it's ready for its first use and abuse session. Next thing we got to do, get it out of this carport and I'm going to use the driveway. The driveway is nice and long. We need, yeah, pretty close to the full length of the rope, which is 28 meters to be able to do this. So let's get into it. Now, why on earth have I just pulled all that cable out there to re-spool it when it looked perfectly neat on that drum already. Good reason. Because when they spool it nice and neat like that on the drum at the factory, they don't do it under load. Now, the reason you have to do it under load is because the first time you use this winch in anger, oh, March flies. No, it's not having that. Now what happens is you've got all these loose layers and you use it in anger, you get big tension on that rope and your top layer cuts down into the second and third layers it can damage and pinch and crush the rope, but uh, what tends to be more of an issue is it tangles all up and gets in a big bird's nest. And then you try and free spool your winch to get it all the way out. And it's all wrapped around the drum and tangled up. So by doing this under load, you're gonna compress it nice and tight. And instead of having loose layers, it's gonna be like that, nice and tight. And that top layer won't cut down into the bottom ones. So I'm gonna run the vehicle. You always have the vehicle running when you use a winch because these bad boys draw as much as, if not more, than a starter motor. We're gonna have the handbrake up just a little bit and we're going to have the gearbox in neutral. Now at the other end, we've got the hook on the 150 Prado. Now everyone knows not to trust a Toyota handbrake. So we've got that handbrake all the way on and we've got the transmission in park. You can use a tree at that end. Wear gloves for this bit because you're gonna be manhandling that rope. I have picked 
the dodgiest pair of gardening gloves I can find with a beautiful hole in the finger there. And it might look dodgy, but there's only a few hundred kilos of pressure here with the handbrake on in the patrol. And you're gonna to have to manhandle this rope backwards and forwards. So you'll have the controller in one hand, you're hooked up to the Prado up there, and the patrol is just gonna pull itself along gently on the handbrake. That's giving you your preload on that rope. And then you'll just be watching on the drum there and guiding that rope back and forth along the drum like so, layering it up nicely. And you're just gonna buzz yourself all the way up to the end of the winch rope, layering it on like that. Now with that last little bit there, you'll end up with about that much rope left after you disconnect it from the other vehicle or tree or whatever you've used. So that last little bit, I just hold onto the hook and quickly jab the button and it pulls it in. And then you sort of just fold the hook back like it is there, give the winch in button a couple more taps and that pulls it tight. Some people are gonna say don't do that because it can damage the winch. And yeah, if you're not careful, it can, but I've done it that way so many times and no one's ever come back with problems. Keeps your hook, see, it's not moving anywhere. It's not gonna jangle around on the front of the car and it keeps the rope nice and tightly packed on the drum. One more thing I didn't mention just before I wound that rope back on uh, was to keep your distance from that fair lead. Try and keep about a meter because you'd be surprised how quick, you know, you're on your remote here and you've got your hand, you'd be surprised just that little lapse in concentration and you could end up sucking your fingers into the winch. So keep a meter back from it at all times and just be careful and be safe. Accidents happen, try and avoid that. There we go, winch install done. And it's even easier if you've got a compatible winch bar. Do it this way with a winch cradle and a non-winch bar and you might save yourself a bit of money. That's entirely up to you. But best thing you can do is go and give it a crack. And if that's not enough of a challenge for you, Go back and have a look at some of my um, past backyard mechanic videos or hit that subscribe button down the bottom there and stay tuned for future ones because you'll find plenty on this channel to keep you working on your own vehicle, bring you some enjoyment and save you some money as well. Thanks for watching. See you in the same place next time.